All right, so you're welcome back to the AM show and we're talking obesity and I'm going to share some stats with you and then we'll come to the conversation itself and you may be wondering who is obese. You're probably thinking that, okay, I'm standing here uh, fit and trim and probably I'm not obese. I may be wrong, you may be wrong. But let's get into uh, some, some study which we're going to be talking about. So the study is an analysis involving 48,000 966 people and it shows that nearly 43 percent of Ghanaian adults are either overweight or obese 43 percent that's a lot that's a lot nearly half of the population now there are more obese people in urban areas which is understandable because in the urban areas where we're more into the junk foods we're likely to end up being obese as compared to those in the rural communities where they're eating the healthy foods, they're eating their pim, their contumere, you know, and, and breathing in really good air. So it, it's understandable. And there are more obese women than men. This one I can't explain. So 21.9% as against uh, 6%. Okay. And then 45.6% of adult diabetes patients in Ghana are either overweight or obese. Then Ashanti Central, Northern and Greater Accra regions have the most overweight or obese residents. Ashanti Central, Northern and Greater Accra. Well, that's where you find the main cities. So Ashanti, Kumasi, Central Cape Coast, Northern Tamale and uh, Greater Accra, Accra. And the most people become or became overweight in Ghana in the period 1998 to 2020. Oh, really? <laughs> That's interesting. But yes, we're getting into the conversation, and Enimwa is going to start that, and we're bringing in some guests to help us to, do, to have this conversation. So, Enimwa. All right. Um, joining us this morning to have this conversation, we have Dr. Joseph Akama. He's a cardiologist. We have Maxwell Conlon, he's a dietitian at the Legon Hospital, and Albert Ajabi, who is a fitness instructor. Um, so I think that I want to start with obviously the classification of obesity, because you can't just assume um, that someone is obese um, just because they're fat. Or can you? Um, let me start with you, Dr. Kama, if you can just tell us, you know, classify for us, you know, how to identify if you're obese or not. Good morning, Good morning. Um, everybody, and um, thanks, Joy TV, for inviting us for this important topic. Um, it is very key that we get alerted and rise to the call to control obesity in Ghana. Um, yes, so obesity is very common, as um, the previous speaker had alluded to, and we are having problems daily with obesity. So to classify obesity, you have to look at the person's height and then the weight. So when you put the height and weight together, uh, we can classify based on the BMI, so the body mass index. So um, you, when you take your smartphone and click in BMI calculator, and you can plug in either using the SI unit or the, the old system where we use pounds and um, um, inches for the height. So by doing that, the weight can be categorized into um, the various numbers based on the BMI. So a BMI of less than 18.5, okay, is underweight. So if your BMI is less than 18.5, you're underweight. The normal BMI based on your height and your weight should be 18.5 to 24.9, that puts you in the right weight category. Now, when you go beyond 24.9, you become overweight. When you become heavy and your BMI goes beyond 30, then we classify you as obese or uh, obese. Now, under obesity, we have different classes, class one, class two, class three. So once you go beyond 30, and you are 30 to 35, you are class one. You are obese, but you are class one. Now, the person who is really heavy, more than 
40 BMI is classified class 3. So um, why do we distinguish them? Some patients cannot even get out of their homes. Their weight is 600 pounds and they can't get out. Those are really the heavy duty um, morbidly obese individuals. Why do we need to classify them? Because the risk of cardiovascular problems, diabetes, stress-induced problems, insulin um, resistance, and heart attacks, strokes, increase as your weight goes up. I would like to talk about other things, but let me hand over back to you to continue your line of questioning. I, I hope it is clear. Yes, it's very, very clear. Thank you for that classification there. Now let's talk about food, um, for example, and how much of that is contributing to um, these statistics that we have. Is there a particular reason um, that we're not eating well? Are we underinformed, or are we just making bad choices? Well, I would like the dietitian to join me in this one. But yes, let me definitely, give you definitely. the practical causes of um, obesity. So the first one you mentioned is diet. There are other things we need to think about. Physical inactivity. Gone are the days. When I was in Legon, I used to walk from Legon all the way to the airport um, to just see planes fly um, in the night. And that was stress relieving and very um, good to do. But now nobody walks that distance anymore. We're all either um, driving or we're taking Okada. So that is a big problem. So physical inactivity. Number three, stress system in our, in our body, the stress system. You know, as of now, everybody's so stressed. Not just this year, last year, previous year. Every year. Years gone by, we have been under tremendous stress and putting on a lot of burden and trying to accomplish so many things within a short period. So when you get stressed, you release the stress hormones to cope you and um, with the stress system you're going through. And some of the hormones are actually going to help you short term. But long term, they make you gain weight. So sometimes you have a patient say, I don't even eat, but I gain weight. Hmm. So cortisol, okay. adrenaline, no adrenaline, all of these are stress hormones that are meant to help you. But inadvertently, they cause you to gain a lot of weight. Mm. We have people who say, oh, my family is big. We're big people. Yeah, we're big people, but you can control it. Some people will inherit obesity, but that is a very small group of people. Um, and going through the statistics you gave us in Ghana, you can understand why Ashanti region, Central region, Greater Accra region, Northern region are obese, because that's where affluence comes in. That is where physical inactivity comes in. That is where the cheap, very fast cholesterol, mean fatty food is, is at. So let me stop here. Maybe the dietitian has more to add to this. Sure. Um, Maxwell, Maxwell Conlan is our dietitian um, for this morning. He is with the Legon Hospital. Maxwell, um, do you want to just enlighten us on whether we are unaware of um, the impact that the foods that we're eating has on us, or are we just making bad food choices um, because perhaps stress, you know, lack of time? Which one do you, do you feel like accounts for more of um, the obesity rise in Ghana? Maxwell, are you there? Whilst we're waiting for him to come on, the, it is difficult to know which one um, is the, the, the number one etiology, I mean, cause. But I think the uh, lack of awareness and then um, the stress level, they go together. Um, so if you're not aware and you are in a, in a hurry, you just grab anything and eat. Besides, because of our development, so-called advancement, in terms of our level of education, level of uh, advancement in terms of technology and food preparation, we're preparing food that is not healthy to rest for mm -hmm. us. For instance, if you look at the Banku of today, 
compared to the Bank coup of 1970 or 1960, they are completely different um, types of banks. If you look at Kenke of today and Kenke of 1970, there are two different types of um, um, Kenke. Reason is it is finer, it is more refined, it has more additives. Some even add sugar, some even add concomte to all of these um, preparations, making it very, very calorie rich. Then when you eat such calorie rich, which has been milled very well, you digest it easily. Your, your system is able to digest it easily and just consume a lot of calories. Mm. In addition, I remember growing up, we used to drink Coca-Cola only once a year or oh, twice, yeah. if you're lucky, twice a year. <laughs> so one would be when you have long vacation and you do well, your father will give you one Coca-Cola or Fanta. <laughs> then another one will be Christmas. Christmas. If you are super lucky, during the Independence birthday. Day, you are chosen to go to regional office, so-called regional office, to march. You get another Coca-Cola. That is three in a year. <laughs> now look at the children of today. They drink Coca-Cola like water. And Coca-Cola, I mean, I'm using Coca-Cola to be the generic. I'm sorry. I'm not meaning the company itself. So please ignore it. Don't go on joy, uh, but take it on me. When I use Coca-Cola, I'm using it to mean the fuzzy drinks, the fast sugar rich drinks so let me take out coca-cola and just use the um, generic name these fast drinks which i mean in fuzzy drinks with a lot of sugar um have the ability to deliver high sugar content within a sh short period okay and it's not just that company i mentioned but you have pepsi you have all kinds of Ghanaian companies producing very fast drinks so all of them are combined. So please um, ignore the fact that I mentioned Coca-Cola on this um, presentation. But what I really mean to highlight is the fact that we have these um, high sugar content drinks produced within Ghana and then imported by foreign companies into Ghana. These are available to children and people just feed their children with sugar content um, problem. Is the dietitian back on? Can he help me? Um, yes, Maxwell. Hello, Maxwell. Are you there? Okay, right. I think, so yeah. We, we, don't, we don't have Maxwell. Yeah. We'll get Maxwell. But thank you very much, uh, Dr. Ankama. He, he said a number of things that uh, I'm particularly concerned about the kinky I eat being more refined and it <laughs> being a, a problem. But we also have Albert uh, Ajayi. He's a fitness instructor. Albert, I can imagine that you have a number of people coming to you and wanting you to help them to shed whatever weight that they have. What are some of the reasons they say they're putting on that weight? <laughs> so, um, good morning, guys. Good morning. Usually when people come, um, their reasons are so superficial. It's not real. Some of them don't want to lose the weight. Oh, they, they don't want, want to lose the weight. <laughs> They want to look slimmer for a birthday party that's coming up in oh, no. time or in two All weeks right. time. So that's why I said their reasons are superficial. But uh. um, for the few who really want to um, stay fit and lose the weight, um, when they come, you know, you, you have to tell them the truth because it's people think it's like um, a means to an end. It's not a means to an end. It's a journey of a lifetime. Right. right. So and. I'm sure most people don't want to hear that. No, we don't. You know, most people don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. Like it's a lifetime. Like to... we're just trying to get through one session of, of working out. And then you say it's a, it's a lifetime. Like forever and ever we'll be exercising. We feel such fear and trepidation. So you have to say it in a different way. I say it in a different way. <laughs> and most people, like the doctor said, when he was in Legon, he used to walk and go and watch the planes at the airport. So walking is one of the things you can do on a daily basis and stay fit and healthy. And with regards to the weight gain or weight loss or obesity, with regards to that specifically, it's more about calories in and calories out, mm. right? So most people are consuming more than they burn or more than they use, right? Because now um, life has become sedentary. People hardly walk anywhere. So people don't do much, but they eat more. 
right? So what they um, what they put in calories are more than they spend. And the accumulation of that is what causes obesity, right? So there are people who are even going to the gyms who are still obese because they're still consuming more than the exercise or more than the burn off. So it's a, it's a cheeky one, right? But with regards to people who come to me and want to lose weight, I, I try to coach them through as in this being a lifelong experience and it's, it's, you, have to, you have to have the f- right reasons to do it. You have to have the right, if you don't have the right reasons of why you want to start, you would not keep it going. I also get it that, uh, Albert, that the people who are coming in, you say most of them have superficial reasons. So some of them will say, maybe I want a bigger butt. Uh, I want a... a Smaller waist. <laughs> yeah, they, they do that, right? But yeah. while, whilst we, we get you to uh, address that, I would also <laughs> want you to take care of your, um, your, your, your video is quite shaky. If you could find a way to stabilize it. So we'll get to Dr. Akama and then uh, get, come, come back now? to you. Let's see what that looks like now. Okay, can we see Albert? Okay, yeah, yeah much better. So, much better. Yeah. So yes, what are they looking for? Bigger butts. Oh man, so... Wh- why is Israel in, asking uh, as if it's just women who come and ask for bigger? <laughs> what are the men looking for? How about you start with that? The, the men want big arms and cis pack, and the women want bigger butt and uh, a slim waist, so... I... So the women ask for more, and the men ask for less. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it, it's the same for me. There's no difference between wanting big arms and but flat I, I, I think um, he's being partial. <laughs> no, I'm, not meaning, I'm not meaning the fiscal um, exercise gentleman, but our co-presenter. Oh, exactly. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Is, Kama. The men, the men ask for double. We want the women to look good on the behind and then we also want to look slim so we're asking for double so we create the woman to want to look like that okay we so we are asking for so many things and we we look you know ghana our tradition our culture is such a way that you have to look a little bit choppy that is that is ingrained when a person marries and he's looking skinny and six pack. The local woman doesn't care about six pack. She thinks the woman is not feeding her son. Um, on the other hand, if a man marries a woman and the woman looks too skinny, the family will come after him. You're not feeding our our daughter very well. So we have this ingrained tradition. Mm. And then the men will also look for women who look like what he's describing. The um, let me use the Coca-Cola again. Coca-Cola. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we have a dual problem. We have a dual problem. But I think what he, he is highlighting is that we go to the physical uh, therapist or we go to the physical trainer and we really give them a short-term goal rather than the long-term goal. Yeah. And the emphasis to be the long haul. We have to work on it over a long period. You could train for just a wedding, lose weight for um, a birthday party, but think about your health in general, because the consequences of obesity are very, very real. Obesity currently is a ranking cause of cancer, premature cancer in young people. If we don't know it, colon cancer, colon cancer is increasing in Ghana. Young people who are obese, get a lot of colon cancer. There are other cancers that we can get apart from the fact that obesity predisposes you to something we call metabolic syndrome, which means that your life is turned into a cardiovascular problem mm. for the rest of your life. So let's listen to the two people carefully, the counseling from the dietitian, the counseling from the, the exercise um, trainer. He is telling us the truth. Yes. Dr. Kamas, thank you very much for your very objective <laughs> pers- um, uh, input there. I, is, we, we really appreciate some objectivity um, this morning uh, for me. But Maxwell, let me come to you. Maxwell is our dietitian who's joined us um, this morning. Maxwell, so what are the things that we are eating? Like if you take the average Ghanaian 
um, their diets? What are the things that we're eating that are really bad? Obviously, outside of the, um, the, the, the usual suspects, so Coke, Fanta, you know, the, the fizzy drinks, the chocolates and all of that. What are some of the things that we're eating that are really bad for us? Right. Um, good morning and um, thank you for having me. In fact, um, Dr. Akama has really uh, brought the light about the plight of obesity in Ghana and it's actually a very big problem. And even uh, to answer your question, um, I, have, I, I have had experiences in clinic where you put someone on, on a, a weight loss diet and then after some time when the person has started losing weight, then the person comes back and say either the mother or the husband is not happy. And so therefore they want to lose. These are some of the problems that face people losing weight. Okay. So it's one of the big things where we need to look at. Now, when it comes to the diet, um, our diet is, is, is a very um, big issue when it comes to gaining weight. Because when you look at a typical Ghanaian diet, almost more than 50% of our food is the Fanta and all that. We also have other things that um, take which can still affect your weight. And one of them is has to do with the excess carbohydrate intake that we Ghanaians do. And this is evident because our diabetes prevalence is increasing. You know, so apart from the junk food such as the sugary drinks and the uh, the, uh, the pastries and all that, people are also consuming a lot of carbohydrates. And that is a one key factor. We need to bring it out there. Maxwell. So if you don't eat a lot of junk food, yes. So, yeah, please go ahead. Okay, so we get, I get the carbohydrate. Please have a very pertinent question. Let's talk about fufu for a second day. Because you are talking about carbohydrate. You see, fufu is an integral part of our culture and identity. Do you understand? Like, you can't live life. Those who live life without fufu, I don't know how they do it. Anyway, let's talk about fufu. <laughs> Is fufu a contributing factor to um, the, the obesity problem um, here in Ghana? And if it is, how do we fix the problem, not the fufu, the problem? Well, so the, the problem is not about the fufu, for uh -huh, instance. It's good. about the amount that you eat. <laughs> okay. So there's no evidence to suggest that uh, fufu is the cause of obesity. But however, the problem with most people is the portions. So if you eat a lot of portions, you would end up gaining weight. So okay. it's not a yes or no answer. It depends on the individual differences and how much um, you eat the fufu and what goes with it. So, so that, that, hey, that's, that's wait, oh, wait, wait. <laughs> Why you say what goes with it? The protein. What does that mean? Yes, so the proteins. Mm -hmm. you, you see somebody can have a, a, a fufu. Please take Israel off camera. <laughs> so, yeah, He's and, interrupting my interview. <laughs> Or, you know, so, of meat, sorry, Max, chicken, go ahead. Fish, and there's crabs, you know, there's all over. All nations. All, over the place. all yeah. nations like so, soup. Yes, yeah, so those are some of the things. Somebody can have his fufu with palm nut soup. Another person can have it with light soup. Now, those differences will determine how much you eat. Probably, if you're eating it with light soup, you're le less likely to consume calories compared to if you're eating it with uh, palm nut soup because of the amount of fat or oil in it. So we need to not, I mean, we are not painting um, our foods uh, black or specifically single out fufu, but the most important thing and the information we are putting out there is the amount of uh, fufu or the amount of carbohydrate that you are eating. That is a very key factor to determine whether you'll be obese or not. Because we now have people who are not even eating a lot, a lot of junk food. There are people who don't take uh, um, sugar, but they end up getting diabetes. Mm. And some of these things are associated with the excess carbohydrate that we are taking. So it is not just enough to say, I'm not eating sugar, I'm not eating pastries or fried foods, but it is a totality of having a balance of all the meals. So if you exceed your portions and it's just only carbohydrates, it doesn't matter whether you don't eat junk foods or not, you still end up gaining weight and the obesity will set in and that's why it exposes you to diabetes. Okay. And Obesity is the number one risk factor for diabetes in Ghana. And over the years, our diabetes prevalence has been increasing. So okay. it tells you that there's something that is wrong with our, our, our food, aside the physical activity, uh, which my friend talked about. So physical activity is also a big thing. So there should be a balance between what you eat and your activity level to prevent you from gaining excess weight. Okay, so basically if you're eating a lot and exercising a lot, then it's fine. Yes, so, so there has to be that balance. However, sometimes 
some people um, overestimate their activity level. They think they are exercising. Yeah. The patient comes in, you ask, I mean, do you exercise? I do every day. You ask how many minutes? It's not even up to 30 minutes. The recommendation for weight loss for activity, at least to maintain your weight, should be at least 30 minutes five times a week. But if you want to lose weight, you have to even do more. Okay. So if you if you are if you think you are exercising and it's not enough and you are eating more, it still wouldn't work. So there has to be that balance. We need to come to a point where the gym, uh, the gyms and dietitians and even doctors come together to help their patients. There has to be a balance between your activity level and what you are eating. Otherwise, the fight against obesity will be a mirage. A mirage indeed. All right, I'll, I'll be yeah. interesting. Um, Albert, I'll be interested. Maxwell, sorry, I'll be interested in getting to know what is it that you do if you if, uh, have a particular uh, diet that you follow. You may want to share that with us, but I'll come to that in a bit. I want us to go onto social media and get to read some of the comments that we have there. We're bringing in. So the question we're asking you is, what is your own struggle with obesity and how? Are you dealing with it? So you share your views with us on the AM show uh, via WhatsApp on, on right here on, on Facebook. So uh, let's get to read some of the comments that are there. I recommend Meta Switch from Max International. Okay, he's, he's marketing. Uh, then uh, Alswell says, but it's okay. that... Okay, he thought we were doing the sports, so... Okay, so uh, Derek. Derek says, mm -hmm. it's because fruits are expensive in this part of our world. King Kate, three cities, fish, two cities, go to five cities will make you full. Just imagine how much fruits You'll you have, have to, to eat uh, to, to not get in kitten kitten in the middle of the night. But Israel, you know, sorry, this point brings me to the fact that healthy food in Ghana is relatively expensive. I would want to agree with you. Yeah, yeah. So uh, well, I think maybe we can have a, a conversation. Um, the third picture resembles a politician. I know. Um, who is who's that? Dylan, who are you talking about? Um, Emmanuel says, no one has that problem in Ghana because we can't get enough food. Are you serious? Really? <laughs> <laughs> There's okay. a reply. I want to find out what uh, what the reply? who replied. So you think obesity is caused by overeating? <laughs> All right. Um, interesting one there. John says, I want to treat it with more chop chop. Don says, come see my people pounding fufu this morning in my grandmom's place. Obesity with some people is no news. Is it, is it obesity or obesity? Because I'm having this thing in my head, you know, obesity, 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 obesity. We'll, we'll, we'll get that out. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so the, the guy was referring to the photo and saying the third one uh, belongs to a politician. That looks like a... Wow. Wow. Shade this morning, huh? Um, okay. Okay, um, Lloyd G says, I love my slimness, my phone dear, but Yaro says, not all fat people look like this. Some have their fats deposited in their breasts and backside, which is very beautiful. Obesity is a beautiful thing in Africa. Skinny looks are Western and not part of our culture. We love fat, right? Okay. Um, obesity is not our culture. Um, urban lifestyle is the cause of such fast-looking people in Africa. So that was a reply. Um, and this thread goes on. Um, Yaro and I think Vincent um, just going on um, through that. Okay, so should we come back to um, maybe Max? Let's, let's, um, let's come back to Max. Well, if he's still on the line. Max, so I'm thinking about, you know, what a, the daily... Daily, the, Ghanaian, the average Ghanaian's daily food intake is like, so wake up in the morning, if you want to eat house, cocoa and kose, you know, you see the woman scooping like 10 spoonfuls of, of sugar into the rubber bag before the cocoa goes inside. Then obviously for lunch, all our choices, accessibility, choices, you know, jollof, fried rice, wache, kenke, fufu, banku. Um, in the evening, pretty much the same thing, indomie, jollof, rice, fried yam, fried pork, fried chicken. Um, if you want to come out of these choices, then you're talking a lot more money. So how do we make healthy food accessible? Or how do we make the food that is accessible to us a little bit more healthy? Yeah, so just, just as you are saying, you, you, you realize that um, you are talking about almost all the carbohydrates, um, right from the breakfast to the lunch. So uh, the, the thing is, it's not about how much you have. You know, we have local uh, Ghanaian foods that you can make it balanced. 
that it will not, um, you will not still end up gaining a lot of wheat. So for instance, if you are buying cocoa, I mean, you can go for some wheat bread or some granite, you know? So the problem with most people is the amount or what comes with the carbohydrate. So for instance, somebody can buy cocoa and take a full loaf of bread. I mean, that you will gain a lot of weight, you know? So it's, it's not about the difficulty in affordability. It's about people not being informed about what choices to, to, to pick. And when you look at our setting, a lot of people go to work and almost um, a lot, an average Ghanaian may eat at least once or uh, one of his two meals outside. And that is a cause of concern because most of the food that is outside is mostly the junk foods. Almost everything is fried. So what we encourage people to do is try to eat more at home. So if you can eat your breakfast at home and control your portions, and even if you are buying lunch, you just have to be careful with what option you are buying. Instead of going for fried options, you can decide to go for board options. So instead of fried yam, you can go for plain, board plain rice. Instead of fried plantain, you can go for board plantain. So there are all the alternative fries can be changed to bold, especially if you have a genetic predisposition or you are in a family of uh, obese people. You would have to even be more careful. And then you look at the physical activity parts to be able to balance it to help you to, to, to balance your weight. So it's not that our diet is actually bad. The problem is about the balance. And because of urbanization, we have moved from our complex carbohydrates, which is our traditional food, and we are not eating a lot of junk foods. Because a typical average plate may be about 15 CDs. And you know what they put in. It's a whole lot of carbohydrate and protein. Yeah. And that's where the problem comes in. People buy that and they have to finish it because they think they have spent money. But that excess you are taking would end up being inside. So the question you should always ask yourself is, is it better to leave the waste outside than to put it in? If you are full, that is it. You can leave whatever is left and share it with somebody. You don't need to be consuming all those amounts of carbohydrate, especially right. those that are bought outside. Okay. Um, Albert, I just, just want to come to you for a second. This morning, we're, we um, are supposed to be having a conversation with Uncle Lebo White on his new book, Let's Talk About Sex. Um, people have said that sex is a pleasurable way of um, burning fat or of losing weight. So for the married people amongst us, I'm asking this on behalf of them, um, how much... <laughs> How much sex do you have to have to lose weight or, or to make it into a fitness activity? No, hold on. I don't, I don't like me being yeah. in the photo when you're going to have this conversation. So can you just get me out of the photo? Let Nima <laughs> ask a question. You, wow. you can't lose weight by having sex. It's you can't not, or you um, can? You cannot. So you it's cannot? A, it's a myth. It's a myth. Oh, it's what's not, a myth? Uh, my fact. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> So for anybody out there who thinks um, having um, sex would um, help them lose weight, um, I'm sorry to bust your bubble. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm just going to confirm. I'm <laughs> going to confirm your 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 thing 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 that you've just said with Do um, Dr. Akama because you know Doc. You don't, me, you don't want to, you don't no, want to no, believe no. it. I, I, Doc, let me come to you because you know people talk about the hormones, for example, um, that we release. You know, after you have sex, the feel-good hormones and all of that, which kind of don't make you want to eat because you are on a high. So um, I think that we should challenge Albert's position on on the the fact that you are not burning any useful calories by engaging in God's um, work. Anewa, um, I think um, you want Albert to confirm the stories that are out there. Yes. And Israel is just smiling and wanting you to, to be pushed the wall. But, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. but um, there been yeah. some, few, some few instances yeah, where... Mommy. Men, oh, baby. whose baby is men, that? So, mommy. Oh, gosh. <laughs> it's okay. Let's see the baby. Let's see the baby. It's okay. Mm. <laughs> yes. That's my, ah, that's my oh boy. Gosh. Okay. That's a family conversation. So, so now, um, Maxwell, we we know yes. what you Albert, did. We know, Albert. Uh, Albert, we know what you did, uh, or we know what you've been yeah. doing. <laughs> so, so there have been some anecdotal reports that when women have a lot of orgasm, they may lose weight, but that is not really true, and you need to have. Uh, a lot of activity to get to that level. Mm. Um, you know, sex is a very physical activity. I use sex to determine the person's capacity, okay, to endure. 
So when, I, when a patient comes to me as a cardiologist, when I ask about sexual activity, I'm looking at the person's exercise endurance. I'm looking at the person's cardiovascular risk. So I use sex in that light, not so much for weight. Please, ex please explain. So, how does that, okay. how are you able to use sex to determine anything? So for men, if a man loses sexual activity, his likelihood of dying goes high. Okay, so if a man cannot perform either by erection or either he cannot cope throughout the night, he is likely to die shorter than his, his age category. Um, really? Who cannot also enjoy sex have some stress, some depression, some hormonal problems going behind the scenes. That means that their stress level is high. That tells me that we need to look behind the face of the person and take care of the person very well. So sex is something that should be enjoyed by both partners. So if one partner is not enjoying it or is having shortness of breath with it, or the male partner cannot erect or cannot enjoy it or has shortness of breath or chest pain during sex, these tell me that the cardiovascular risk factors are going to be higher in those people. Or sometimes so they're just being denied. Pardon? Sometimes they're just being denied the sex. Yeah, yeah. sometimes uh, denying somebody sex is not really the right way to deal with things. When you're angry with your partner, it doesn't mean you should deny with the sex. Because, you know, um, in as much as you use sex to back gain, you also know that it's a Human relationship is a biological requirement that we should copulate once a while if you are married in the right sense. So marriage needs to be lubricated with all of these things, not just providing food for the family, but taking care of the woman. Mm. And then the woman, not just providing food for the man when he comes home, but making sure that he's satisfied. And once the person gets satisfied sexually, the stress level goes down. So, Anwa, you're right. Stress level goes down with adequate sex and good relationship. Because mm. adequate sex means the partnership is good mm. and the partnership is healthy, meaning the person will live long, the person will have better outlook in life in terms of his cardiovascular risk factors. Fantastic. Having said that, I wanted to add the fact that we say we what we add to the food is not just the the main thing but hope we drink with the fufu okay. so when you go and exercise say somebody exercises once a week saturday he goes to climb the Iburi mountain then when he comes down to the ground floor he goes for a big bowl of fufu with all nations and then he gets three clubs or three stars or three golders you just undone everything you've done for the last one year okay <laughs> so um that is what we need to look at. When you are exercising for cardiovascular health and weight loss, you need to go higher, about 45 to 60 minutes per day, five times a day, a week. A week. If you don't want to be healthy, 30 minutes a day is okay. But most of us just exercise once a week. And then we come and clear everything on the plate. And then in the evening, we go and add more. We will celebrate. So it is a tough problem. We need to change the attitude. Change the attitude. All right. Okay, so I, I would want us to uh, speak with um, you know, Maxwell, Maxwell again. And it's about the choices that we make and about the meals that we have, our diet. You, you talk about, because of our lifestyle, it's, it's difficult. We end up having a lot of junk food. We're eating out a lot. But how about... If we make a conscious effort to make our own meals or pack our lunch, for instance. So you're leaving the house very early, and so you probably can't have breakfast at that time. But how about if you pack your breakfast or if you pack your lunch so that you know that you're eating, you know what you're eating, and you're not uh, ending up with uh, so much junk food, uh, Maxwell? Yes, yeah, so I, I think that is uh, one of the best options and way out to be able to take your food from home 
um, to, to work because that will really help. That kind of reduces your risk of eating outside. Now, as to what you take uh, to work, um, for instance, it depends on you, the individual, and your food preferences. Some people want a tea, others want um, a, a porridge. So the local Ghanaian cereals are options. You can have oats, you can have Tom Brown, you can have millet porridge. However, what should come with it should be well balanced. Okay, you can go for wheat bread. Some don't really like the wheat bread, what we call brown bread. If you don't like it, fine. You can still go for your butter or sugar, but just reduce the portions for a pack of breakfast and a little amount of sugar and some amount of milk. When you are looking out for milk, you look out for the low fat options. You know, so there are a lot of milk brands that are now having alternatives for low fat, especially they normally leave it as green for most of the companies. So you can go for those options. Now, talking about milk, there are people too who put in a lot of milk. Somebody can put in a whole tin of milk in his uh, tea or porridge. That is also of concern because even in as much as the milk is low fat, there's still calories in it. And when you take a lot, you end up gaining a lot of weight. So that balance has to come in. So you can put in some milk, but not too much. Now, the amount you put de de depends on your level of activity and what you do. Now, going to lunch, when you are packing lunch, you need to look at complex carbohydrates. People don't like brown rice. Fine, if you don't like brown rice and it's just white rice, you can still add a lot of vegetables. For instance, kontome, which are local Ghanaian stew, it's a very healthy meal, provided you can limit the oil. So if you have your white rice with kontome, you are eating a lot more balanced diet, even okay. though you are eating white rice. And okay. that can come into help. If it's fufu you want, you can go for light soup that is made with fish, so that uh, you don't put in a lot of meat. Even if you, go, uh, you limit uh, the fat, you go for the lean options. So these are alternatives that you have. And watch out for the portions. The portions are very important for me because as long as you don't look at the portion control you are still going to miss it you may end up still gaining weight and then when you come back home then because you'll be late um by coming back home, most people come back home late so that is where the emphasis should be your meal should be less in calories right from um depending on the day so breakfast should be a little more heavier lunch in that same manner because you'll be working but in the evening it should rather be less but we have turned the whole thing upside down. It is yeah. now around nine, somebody has gone, gotten home and he's going to eat a, a full mountain of fufu. I mean, when you do that, that would not work. You end up gaining a lot of weight. So yeah. we need to watch out and make sure that the supper is really less in calories so that we can be able to eat our real obesity. And one thing I want to add is that Ghanaians really glorify obesity. And when you look at the comment that our uh, our viewers were sharing, a lot of people were happy about obesity and they said um, obesity is an African thing and people are beautiful when they are obese. But that is not the case because come to the clinic, if you pick five page four the of obese and sisters are and and uh, or a lifestyle disease, obese. Okay, so those are some of the things we need to look at. Obesity should not be glorified. And when you have a relative who is losing weight, do not intimidate the person and think that he's, the person is not having, he's having economic issues or the person having marital issues. That's why the person is losing weight. That is the right way to go. So we need to educate the general public about the risks of obesity and letting people to accept that losing weight is the right thing so that okay. our cultural beliefs and other things do not affect um, the rates of weight loss. Because when we keep uh, allowing people to become obese, then we are heading towards a much uh, dangerous terrain because obesity is highly much associated with diabetes and other chronic diseases. Okay. Thank you for that, Maxwell. Um, let me just ask Albert my very last question. Um, Albert, is it possible, do you think that somewhere in the near future, perhaps we could legislate for mm -hmm. a law that allows... Um, very fit men to walk around in gyms half naked as a form of motivation or inspiration <laughs> for the rest of us so that we can actually find our way um, to the health clubs and to the gyms. This is a very serious question. I don't like the fact that people are laughing. I'm very, very, very serious. <laughs> You'd have to unmute, please. Albert, Albert. you have to unmute. Uh I think you're asking the wrong person because this is legislation and that's more um, the politicians. Oh, no, but we have to start so with the asking. campaigning. Um, but on a, no, on, a more thing, I, on a more serious note, what I actually want to talk about <laughs> is motivation. So it's my way of asking you, 
that you know how do we um, how do we motivate people to get out there to work out when you go to the gym last night i passed through um, a gym at jolu and you see people who are fit you know very you know sexy women so, very nice looking men and you're thinking okay if i'm fat or if i'm overweight you know how do i fit into this this club of already you know sculpted men and women um so with regards to motivation i think um your best motivation is the mirror right so when you look in the mirror and you don't like what you see then the next thing is to work on it. Well, there are first people right. that look no in one, the mirror uh, and they like what they see, bro. <laughs> like, <laughs> if you like what you see, then live with it. Okay. But um, I know for sure there are so many people who, behind closed doors, don't like what they see, mm. right? And they're so concerned with the opinions of others. That's why they don't work out. Now, personally, no one else can help you. I can only help you when you come to me, as in, okay, I need help, right? Now, again, so that's, um, with regards to motivation, look into the mirror. But people are searching for motivation when they should be searching for discipline. Mm. It's the disciplines that will get you through it daily. Motivation comes and goes, right? There's somebody watching this video or this um, show right now who will be motivated to start eating right and start doing all those things this particular moment. But in a few minutes... They don't lack, they lack the discipline to follow it through. Yeah. So most people are searching for motivation, but they need, it's discipline that you need. It's every day. I tell you, I do, I work out every day and I try to eat as healthy as I can every day, but it gets difficult every day. I have to talk myself through it every day. Okay. So people should look for discipline. Like, why did you start? So when you wake up in the morning and you want to do something and your mind is telling you not to do it, convince yourself why you started that's the discipline because mm. motivation won't be there forever okay. but discipline when you build it will stick with you forever well thank you for that may the lord jesus christ who saved us from sin give us the grace to be disciplined and um, fix our lives and fix our bodies thank you guys so much um maxwell Albert and do my favorite doctor of all time, absolutely. Um, thank you so much for, sh <laughs> for sharing your morning with us. We're so grateful. You guys have a fantastic weekend. Thank you for joining us here on the AM show. Um, that I am thank you for having me. Reluctantly thank doing you with Israel. <laughs> <laughs> thank you guys. All right. <laughs> and enjoy your day. But the, the, I mean, one of the things I took out of it is that uh, the family members are also contributing yeah. to the obesity uh, challenge Issue, we're, yeah, we're yeah. having because they're looking at their family members, their relatives who are in marriages and saying, well, your husband is not taking good care, care of you. you. Or your wife or your is wife not is feeding not. you. Yeah. 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 So uh, please set us free. Oh, okay.